Hello, this is Mr. McMurray again for our, I hope we are our final section of this chapter. I will go over something again we talked about last time. We talked about uh, two objects, different weights, big rock, little rock, that they would fall at the same speed, okay? For example, if the rock had a mass of 4 kilograms, okay, we know that its weight would be 10 newtons per kilogram, so 4 times 10 would give you a weight, or the force of gravity pushing down on it, of 40 newtons okay if this have a smaller rock over here it would have a smaller mass let's just say two kilograms it's probably a little smaller than that but let's just say two kilograms and since once again each kilogram has a mass, uh, weight of two newtons a uh, 10 newtons two times 10 would give you a um, weight of 20 newtons all right but if you wanted to figure out their acceleration or a which is equal to force divided by mass, this would give you a acceleration of 10 meters per second squared. But 20 divided by 2 would also give you an acceleration of 10 meters per second squared. So they would have an acceleration that is identical, okay? And they would fall at the same rate because even though this has a bigger force or weight, it also has more mass, which means it has more inertia, which resists acceleration. And so it would they would end up having the same acceleration. Okay, for this these objects. Alright. Now, um, basically, uh, another way to rewrite uh, Newton's second law is to say that force, we solve for F, force is equal to mass times acceleration okay and if something is falling the main force that's accelerating it would be gravity all right and so the force would be equal to mass times acceleration or g g is the acceleration due to gravity okay and if we take the mass times gravity we know that the force is its weight pushing down so another way to write this would be that weight, okay, WT for weight, the weight of an object is equal to its mass times G, which is the acceleration due to gravity. And as we notice down here, if we want to find the force, okay, basically it's the mass times 10, okay, because uh, one kilogram has a uh, a, a, a weight of 10 newtons. So basically the acceleration of gravity or g, g is equal to 10 meters per second squared. Notice this is not the value of gravity. This is how much gravity accelerates objects and all objects will accelerate at that rate. Okay. And so, um, technically it's 9.8, and you will see that number usually in a lot of books, but since we're not doing a lot of, of uh, problems, we're just going to round it off to 10, 9.8 rounds roughly to 10. And so, it's going to be 10 meters per second squared as that force of gravity. Now, we had just stopped on the last one. Uh, we had said, how come though all objects that fall down do not fall down at that same speed? Okay, uh, for example, we talked about the feather and the coin in here. If you drop them through the air, they will not fall at the same speed. Okay, you would say, well, uh, the bigger force on the coin because it weighs more, but it also has more mass and inertia, which resists acceleration, so they should fall at the same speed. And if this were free fall, that would be true. Okay, uh, free fall is when the only forces acting on an object are gravity okay and that is called free fall okay but in fact when objects fall through the atmosphere there is another force acting on them which is air resistance or air drag which is really just a type of friction kind of like what we talked about earlier so if you have objects falling there is Besides gravity pulling them down, there is another force 
that is pushing up on them and that is called air resistance or air drag okay so um, for some things a rock that are fairly rounded shape it might not make a lot of difference and so if we could drop two objects that are fairly rounded they would not they would seem to fall pretty much at the same time as long as there's not much air resistance but for lighter objects the lighter the object the more air resistance has an effect or drag on how much it falls for example now we have two objects here on one hand we have a golf ball the other one we have a styrofoam ball originally they start falling at about the same rate but you will notice that the styrofoam ball does not fall as fast as the golf ball okay and eventually there's a fairly good gap between them all right why is this true well let's talk about that for a second all right how much air resistance there is depends on a couple of things okay now when we talk about air resistance keep in mind when you walk through the air there is air resistance it's not a lot because in the gas the atoms are spread really far apart and so they don't push on you if you walk through water like in a swimming pool there is more water resistance because the atoms in a liquid are closer together and you're having to push through them and of course if you walk try to walk through a solid you're going to just run into the wall and hurt yourself because the atoms are so tightly packed together you can't move through it okay and so uh, air resistance we don't think think of it sometimes as varying very much it is definitely less than liquids like water or solids but it's still got a definite air resistance okay two things it depends on all right it depends on two things air drag is proportional to one the speed of the object uh, if you think about yourself sticking your hand outside the car window okay there's air resistance against it if you're going fairly slow it's not a big deal and you can just kind of coast your hand up and down and have a good time but if you're going 60 miles an hour or more phew, it could slam your hand back into the car and hurt it okay so uh, the faster you go the more air resistance there is okay and this is like race cars they go very fast they try to make the car very smooth so that there's very little resistance no rough edges no squared off edges and stuff that catch the the wind they or reduce that air drag okay the other thing is the amount of surface area or frontal area if it's falling the front being the bottom of the object the more surface area there is the more it increases the air drag okay and so that increases the force pushing against the object so for example um if you dropped a piece of paper say you have two pieces of paper if you crumple one up into a ball okay and the other one you just let fall as a sheet of paper okay because of the greater surface area or frontal area of the one falling uh, the flat piece of paper is going to slow down and have more air resistance or drag whereas the watered up paper you're going to have less air drag or air resistance and will fall faster. Now, if you could make this piece of paper stand on end so there's just this edge catching the air resistance, then it would fall fairly fast also. But normally that's not going to happen. It's going to end up turning flat, and then when it does, it catches more air and you have more air drag. Okay? So these two things, how fast it moves, all right, and do it. Now, there are some common misconceptions about this. So, for example, in you'll say, oh, what if I took a penny and dropped it off the Empire State Building? It's possible that I could kill people down at the bottom because it's going to accelerate or speed up as it falls down. And that's true. Objects will fall at a rate of 10 meters per second squared. Every second, they will be going 10 meters per second faster. So after one second, they'd be going 10 meters per second. After two seconds, they'd be going 20 meters per second. After three seconds, they'd be going 30, and you get the idea, 40, 50, eventually. After 100, they'd be going 1,000 meters per second. And that would be true if they continue to accelerate but as they start going faster and faster what happens to their air drag or air resistance it also increases and eventually you're going to reach a point where the air drag pushing up against the falling object is going to equal the acceleration and it will not speed up anymore now it will not slow down but it'll reach a certain speed and it can't go any faster because it's going so fast it's got so much air resistance that it's keeping it at that same speed and it can't go any faster than that all right this is called the terminal velocity terminal at the end so this is terminal velocity this is the very peak speed that the object can re uh, reach and so eventually that penny falling off the Empire State Building it will get going pretty fast but it will eventually reach a point that its speed it's going so fast that its air resistance is canceling out and it quits speeding up. Would it hurt if it hit you? Yes. 
but since it doesn't keep speeding up faster and faster and faster, it would not uh, do damage. If it continued to speed up the whole time, yes, it could very well kill somebody. But eventually it's going to reach the point to where it can't go any faster. And that terminal velocity would be well below like a bullet or something like that. And so it would not have enough speed to, to really hurt you. Okay, uh, An example of an animal that does this kind of thing, uh, uses air resistor drag, would be a uh, flying squirrel. Flying squirrels can jump from one tree to the next and they kind of use gravity as they fall down. As they come in for a landing, you notice he spreads out his uh, feet and arms and legs, makes this big flat surface, which... It's going to increase his air drag, slows him down, and allows him to land gently on the branch. Otherwise, if gravity kept pulling him faster and faster, then he would smash into the branch and hurt himself. Okay, um, let's look at one more example of terminal velocity before we let that go. Okay, now the question is, say you have uh, the same type of parachute, and you have a heavier person and a lighter person, and they both jump out. The question is, we said, according to... A theory of air resistance, I mean, of, of uh, Newton's second law, all objects should fall at the same rate. And if you just fell, let them fall and their air resistance is about the same, that would be true. But uh, once they pop their chutes, okay, here's the deal. Uh, the force that's pushing down on this one is basically its weight, okay, this person's weight, okay. And this person has a fairly large weight, so we'll write that real big. Okay, this person has a small weight. So we'll write that a little bit smaller. Okay, now they will both begin to fall and accelerate at the same speed. After one second, they'll be going 10 meters per second. After two seconds, they will be going uh, 20 meters per second, and they will continue to speed up at the same rate. Now, as they speed up, their air drag pushing against their parachute will get more and more. Okay, but which one, as the air drag resists, is it going to meet the weight of this person first or the weight of this person first? Well, this one's a smaller weight. So as the air drag increases, it's going to meet this person's weight and they will reach their terminal velocity. Okay, at which point they will no longer speed up anymore. They will say, keep that one speed all the way down. This person has a heavier weight, so they have to fall farther and accelerate faster until they reach that. Now, once they reach, once the air drag is equal to their weight, then they will not speed up anymore as they fall down, and they will reach a constant speed or terminal velocity, and they can't go any faster than that. But, yes, this heavy person then will be going at a higher speed when it hits the ground. Not, hopefully, if they have the right kind of parachute, a whole lot, but it will be a little bit more. Now, you could adjust for that by giving the bigger weight person a bigger parachute, therefore increasing their drag that they started with and then as they speed up it would get even more and it could slow them down at the same time okay but if they have equal parachutes then this person is going to have to get to higher speed before they get enough air resistance to reach that terminal velocity and so they will actually hit the ground at a faster speed air resistance is a good thing or a bad thing well it depends of course if you're trying to slow down air resistance is great parachutes are good for that if you were just to dive out of a plane on your own you would eventually hit a terminal velocity or speed of about 150 to 200 kilometers per hour. That would be about 70 to 90 miles per hour. You would die most of the time. There are occasional examples, exceptions that make the news when someone smashes into uh, something soft enough or whatever that they survive that. But the odds are not in your favor. Okay. However, if you put a parachute on there, which greatly increases the drag much quicker, therefore your terminal velocity might only be... 15 to 25 kilometers per hour, which is only going to be about 7 to 12 miles per hour. And that is a speed that you can certainly live with and survive at the end of it when you touch. So um, in this case, air resistance is a good thing. Now, if you're trying to go faster, speedier, cars, uh, race cars in particular, runners running around the race, uh, swimmers moving through the water, uh, they are going to try to reduce friction because they want to be able to go faster. So just keep in mind, air drag can be a bad thing or a good thing, just depending if you want to go faster or if you want to go slower. All right. Uh, but at any rate, if you, any object falls, eventually it will reach a terminal velocity and it can't go any faster than that terminal velocity. Um, and so uh, that's because once the air drag increases to the point that it equals the weight or the force pulling down on them, uh, then it cannot speed up anymore after that. It will keep falling at the same speed, but it will not speed up. And that's about it for this chapter. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.